Scammed for $16,000. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article, which is really a warning to all of us to be extra vigilant. This man lost $16,000 in seconds after a text message. So let's check this out. A man has lost over sixteen grand in a matter of seconds after getting a text. Jacob Harris told news.com.au that he never imagined he, be, he would be one of those people who fell victim to a scam. Well, yeah, it, it can pretty much happen to anyone. It, it, uh, there's a gentleman at church. What he does is he has no ability to withdraw money or anything like that from his bank account. He's got an, an old-fashioned checkbook. So when his wife like pays for something and he needs to give her money, he'll write out a check. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, when's the last time? Let me know in the comments, when is the last time you've actually written a check? When I think maybe I paid a staff member in a check when I first started my business. That ended real quick. But yeah. The 29-year-old from Newcastle, New South Wales, is a well-educated businessman who has worked digitally, digi diligently throughout his adult life to save money for the future. His hard-working nature, however, may have been what made him an easy target. Back in January this year, he was having another, another busy day like usual. Tons of phone calls, lots of meetings, and plenty of tasks to tick off his to-do list. It was at this moment that Jacob received a very concerning text from his bank, NAB, which suggested that his account was hacked and compromised. I mean, yeah, I can, if you're busy enough, I can see people, people falling for it. I can appreciate that. But I mean, the thing is, you never never respond to any of the numbers or click on anything in the text. You bring them up the other way you would. That, that's, that's the thing. But, uh, he was instructed to call the number in the text straight away in order to keep his money safe. Yeah, that's, that's a warning, uh, warning as well. And the text appeared legitimate as it was from NAB's real number. I, I don't even know what their real number is. How do you know that? But I mean, you can just change. Remember in the old faxes on computers, you could write any number you would in there. It was super busy day and my mind was elsewhere when I got the text. I do not wish to be pictured, recorded. Yeah, I don't blame him. It said there was a large amount of money about to be transferred from my account and if I hadn't authorized the transaction to call the number. Yeah, I mean, I, I get those messages from my bank when I send out or when I transfer money. I thought I'll quickly phone them and get it sorted. It all seemed legitimate as when I scrolled up, I could see that NAB had sent other texts in the past from that number. Ah, okay. This is why I don't want to give banks your phone. You know, you don't, I don't, I don't like doing business over texts. Am I the only one like that? I called and I said, welcome. Uh, and it said, welcome to the National Australia Bank. I was even put on hold. It didn't feel any different to what would have happened when I called NAB. Oh boy. Um, yeah, there you go. Look at this. Smart. They're doing it. They're copying everything. Payment tracking reference. Yep. It wasn't until later I found out they actually said welcome to NAB, not the full name. The person on the other end had a British accent and sounded very calm and collected. They explained everything in a very matter-of-fact way. I did not feel rushed. I didn't suspect anything in the moment. The man on the phone, to phone told him that he was setting up an account in his name and that he would need to transfer his savings over in order to secure his account. I mean, it... Would they ever really help you on the phone like that? I'm trying to think. I mean, this is why you need to have your own accounts everywhere. So you don't need to do that. You just say, okay, I'll take it out of my NAB account and put it into my ING account or my, I don't know, the, the bank that offers higher interest rates, that type of thing. He made two transactions on the phone. The first one for uh, 15550 and the next was for 52220 after sending the money, he became a little suspicious and asked the scammer a question to gauge his response. Oh, well, it's kind of late then. He asked me to confirm my details, I thought. Wouldn't he already have everything there? He told me it was to ensure that I wasn't committing fraud. And then I asked him, how did I know he wasn't a scammer? He replied, he said, well, the text came from NAB, didn't it? And it had, so I thought that must have meant it was definitely legitimate. Ah, oh, shit. There you go, guys. 
Don't call the number in the text. Do not call them. Go on the website and call the bank there directly and ask them what's going on. But it's it's. You know, I've had some texts or messages that that uh, what was it that that was it the other day. I got one from a crypto wallet I had sent me an email going your you know your wallet's been approved to connect to Coinbase and all of this stuff. And I'm going I haven't used that wallet in years. I haven't done that or that. And they said click on this here to activate it. So there you go. There you go trying to trying to fish you. So although he did not realize it at the time, he'd been a victim of spoofing, a stinky tactic commonly used by scammers to appear more legitimate to potential victims. Spoofing a number allows scammers to send texts or emails posing as another entity, often posing as a large corporation or company. My mum was actually the one who caught on first, Jacob said. She was uh, here at the time. It all happened. She asked me if I was sure it really was from NAB after I told her about it. That's when I, I went on Google and realized, OMG, it was a scam. I uh, felt so sick and worried. I called NAB less than an hour later. I transferred the funds, but it was too late. The money was gone. Sadly, once the money had been transferred, there was nothing NAB could do to retrieve it. As a gesture of goodwill, they did offer him a one-off compensation of six grand earlier this month. Oh, there you go. I mean, that's better than nothing, isn't it? That's, I mean, because he did it, didn't he? He transferred it. Oh, bugger. Jacob said he was thankful it was not his entire life savings, but he was still a significant chunk of money that he'd been putting aside for the future. I'm dumbfounded that it was all gone in an instant, he added. I'm lucky that I have a great support system. I'm in a healthy place mentally. For some people, it could have been everything to their name. Yeah, he's, he's right there. That's the thing. Others could be suffering from depression or anxiety, and something like this would really compound that. It could be such a terrible situation. That's why you just need to be a rude bastard to anyone on the phone when they ring you up. Take a page out of my book. Dude, I, yes. He hopes that by sharing his story, he can help raise awareness about these types of sophisticated scams and warn others to be extra vigilant when it came to anything banking. I'm a youngish guy in the scheme of things, and I work in tech. Yeah, he should know better. The guy, he should know better, honestly. I thought I was really tech suave and couldn't be fooled by something like this, but it just shows you it can happen to anyone. I've noticed a lot of younger people have fallen victim to these type of scams. Or, well, a lot of them have fallen victim to bloody crypto garbage. So uh, people often think it's all the people who are more vulnerable, but it's not always the case. Everyone needs to be aware. A spokesperson for NAB warned that scams are on the rise and are becoming increasingly sophisticated. While we can't comment on individual cases, we've seen a significant increase in scams in recent years, and we know the results can be devastating on the people they impact, both emotionally and financially. This is a, there is a scam ec- epidemic, and it requires collaboration across government, banking, telecommunications, online and social media industries, consumer groups, and regulators in a Team Australia approach to address the problem. We conducted a thorough investigation into each case. Okay, yeah. Um. The bank also confirmed the scammers are using spoofing tactics to trick people. Scammers can use software that makes the phone number they're calling or texting from appear on your device as belonging to a well-known organization. Criminals can send messages with the sender's name set to NAB or any other organization. When a customer receives a text message or calls impersonating NAB, it means a company has spoofed our number and is impersonating us. Well, maybe you've got to... Stop communicating with your bank via text or SMS. Block them from that. Then they'll just use email or something else. NAB will never ask a customer to confirm, update, or disclose personal or banking information via a link. Yeah. Your money is safe if it's in your account. This is the thing. He moved it. He moved it. Once you move your money to another account, you lose control of it, and it can be very difficult for your bank to recover it. Scams impersonating NAB and other recognized brands uh, continue to rise. Why didn't he send, why didn't, if it was an interbank transfer, or uh, was it to another NAB account? Couldn't he have told, realized that from the BSB numbers? Or maybe they took it straight out. Um, NAB added that organization has taken steps to combat the issue. Okay. Um, So guys, there we go. Let's have a bit of a talk about this one. 
I mean, this is just a lesson learned we all have to pay attention to. Share with your family and friends. Just be vigilant. That's all really, you know, it could be anyone could fall for it. It's that easy. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Check out Heiser Bim or Heiser Does if you want to see other videos. And if you're a fan and want to support us, you can on YouTube or Patreon. Use our affiliate links via Pocket Squares or call us if you need an architect. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.